What is up, rockers? Today, we're going to talk about the top civilization to pick in 2022, and we are already on quarter three. Since the previous video that we have made in quarter one, we didn't have the Egypt civilization. So today, we're going to update this video. Now, we're going to talk about sixth best civilization in Rise of Kingdoms with the addition of Egypt and as well as three worst civilization that you can get here in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, your opinion might differ from my opinion when we're picking out different strategies and different approaches within the civilization in here. I do appreciate if you guys will have a constructive criticism if you will have any disagreement with me, but if you agree, then it's perfect. So today, we're going to pick the best civilization or the top pick civilization in the quarter three of Rise of Kingdoms. Now, let me remind you that civilization is very important. In the very beginning, when you are going to pick your civilization, I will tell you this right now that I highly recommend if you are going to create your main account, create your main account with the China civilization so that you will have Zun Tu as your primary commander. It will help you to build buildings as well as you have 5% build speed. This will help you as well. And also the action point recovery will help you to grind barbarians in the early stages of the game so that you can level up your commanders faster by having that 5% action point recovery and as well as getting all those loots and other things like doing Kerouac event and as well as doing a rally on a barbarian fort. Once you settle in, you'll understand everything that I'm talking about right now. Now, as you play in progress within your game, once you've reached level 10, you will be able to get a civilization change. This will allow you to change your civilization. And keep in mind, when you change your civilization, it does not affect any of your starting commanders. You will keep those. Now, the only thing that is going to affect when you change your civilization is your current civilization is going to change, of course. And the second thing that is going to change is your special unit. So if you started with China, your special unit will be Chu Konu. Let's say you've switched it to Japan, then your special unit will become Samurai. And what happens to your Archer? It will become a just normal unit. All right. All right. So now if you're creating like a farm account to help you grow your account, meaning this farm account is going to send resources to your main account, I, then I would then recommend that you can either start with China and then switch it to Japan, or you can just start off with Japan, which is Kosunoki is not a bad, um, you know, commander. But with this, it will allow you to have a 5% resource gathering speed. And that will help you to gather any types of resources much faster in the field. All right. So this is very important to really know the basic of this choosing civilization in the very beginning. Now, once you have chosen that, your next step is now trying to figure out what is my late game civilization going to be. Now, being a free-to-play, being a spender, being a whale, there's very different uh, approaches into this. All right, so if you are a free-to-play, you are not going to choose some of the you know, civilization that a Kraken would do, like players who would launch rallies, lead as a captain. But if you are a medium spender, you're also you know, more than likely not going to choose that as well. If you're, you know, medium spender and free to play, you're more than likely going to choose something along the line where how can I pick a civilization that benefits me the most to where like you're going to be doing a lot of open field battles. So therefore, choosing a civilization that is reliant to open field battle might be the best course of action for you. Now, today, we're going to update the previous video that we did. We talked about five best civilization, which we're going to kind of summarize this a little bit in here. Now, the five best civilization that I talked about previously, if you have not seen that video, go ahead and check this video out right here. So the five best civilization that I've talked about previously is number one is China. This is one of the best starter civilization to pick. And I don't recommend for players to go into this in the late stages of the game. Definitely a great starter civilization. Now, the second best civilization that I have recommended is Vikings. This is going to be for players that are running infantry units. Now, Vikings is really good for free to play and those medium spenders that are going to be fighting in the open field. If you are a specialized infantry, this is definitely a civilization that I would recommend for you. Infantry attack increased by 5%, counterattack damage by 3%, troop load 10%. Now, troop load, it doesn't really matter unless you're like trying to raid bases, which I have done here. I've swarmed cities to loot them. But for the most part, you're looking at the infantry attack and as well as the counterattack damage by 3%. For example, you get into the late stage of the game and you have Harold, amazing commander with insane counterattack damage, pairing up with Viking and Harold, absolutely insane. 
All right. Now, the third best civilization that I would say this is going to be for the whales. Now, for the whales, um, I should probably segregate these because I think the whales have different categories than than if, than you know than free to play and as well as medium spender. But I'll talk about some of the extra ones that I think is also best, but it's not in the top best, right? Because we, the whales, you know, civilization also kind of get into the category stuff in here. So the next one that I want to say is Arabia. This is a really good civilization for those who spends money into the game, who leads rallies. Now, Arabia gives you 5% cavalry attack, as well as damage dealt by rallied armies by 5%. So if you're a rally captain, this is something that you're going to be looking for, especially if you're a cav specialist, all right? So the next civilization that I would want to recommend, this is great for all types of players, the Ottoman Empire. This is great for free-to-play, for spenders, for whales, right? We're talking about spenders, we're talking about medium spenders. All right, for these mega spenders, this also works well for you. Now, Ottoman Empire or the Turkish, right? Um, this will allow you to increase your archer health by 5%, troop marching speed, great on the open field, 5%, and as well as active skill damage, 5%. This helps you a lot, even if you're launching rallies, especially full archers, right? You're getting that 5% skill active damage and 5% archer health as well. Troop marching speed allows you to move from point A to point B much a little bit faster than others, right? Especially if you're archer, you're not the fastest. Cams are, of course, fastest, but this 5% helps you out. And of course, it also helps your cams if you have a cav march in the game as well. So this is definitely one of the best ones to have in Rise of Kingdoms. And this is what I currently have right now as an Ottoman Empire. And I've had this for a long time. Now, the last civilization that I talked about in the previous uh, video is Germany. Germany is a really good civilization. This is almost like underrated civilization, in my opinion, if you're a cavalry, especially if you're free to play. Now, increased cavalry attack by 5%. The big thing here is that troop training speed by 5%. Now, you might say it's only 5%, but if you add things up, you get the Duke title, you get the training buff, you get a rune, everything adds up. And as a free to play, you don't have a lot of speed ups. And this is going to help you significantly in the progress here in Rise of Kingdoms. You also get the action point recovery by 10%, allows you to defeat barbarians and, you know, Kerouac, as well as like doing barbarian forts or maybe during pre KVK, well, you have to kill a lot of martyrs and martyrs encampments. So, Germany is a great civilization for free to play, and even for the spenders as well, because this is a great civilization that you can switch to and get that troop training speed by 5% addition. All right. So, the last thing that I want to add into here, and you guys probably have an idea already. I'm going to add Egypt because Egypt is exactly similar to the Arabia, but this is going to be for archers. Now, increased archer attack by 5%, rallied armies damage dealt by 5%, building and the research speed by 1.5%. Now, one thing that I realized in here that makes Egypt so amazing is that this is a civilization that you can actually switch as soon as you reach a level 10. Now, the thing here is that this is going to be really great for spenders. Um, so if you are a spender and you have reached level 10, I would say, sit the whole level 10, I would say switch into Egypt because this is going to help you big time, especially if you're an archer march, right? Um, I would say almost like you have to be an archer march because you get that archer attack 5%, but I understand that if you're not really trying to be an archer player, this is still going to be decent for you. The reason why I say this is because once you switch into this, let's say, let's just put the scenario that you are a full archer march, all right? Your archers are going to get 5% damage. Great. You rally the armies as well. When you launch rallies, you get some, you know, great bonus in here as well. Now, the building and the research speed is what kicks me here a little bit to make it like so juicy about this civilization. Because if you are a whale or a spender and you switch into this, because with your building and research speed, you get like 1.5%. And it might not seem a lot to you, but if you really think about this, a lot of people would try to switch to Korea to get the research speed by 3%. But imagine it's like you don't have to switch at all. You're just staying here. Your building is a lot faster to build and your research is a lot faster to build. You got to understand, you got to add things up, right? You got to add all the runes, all the title and all that thing, right? So it does add up significantly eventually. The best thing about this, you don't have to keep spending 10,000 gems later on to switch, you know, civilization. So Egypt is definitely one of the best, and I'm adding it, six best civilization here in Rise of Kingdoms to switch to. 
Now, let's talk about some of the civilization that we kind of didn't mention in here, but I would say well, let's give them an honorable mention. So the honorable mention, I would say France. Um, I switched to France before when I was running with like, you know, mixed troops. At a certain point of my gaming here, I ran out of archers and I had to do mix, right? I had to mix infantry and cav. I switched to France and I think it was really great. Um, you get increased troop help by 3%. This is not only specific to one unit. This is all unit, even your siege. And then you get gathering speed, you know, 10%. That's cool. But the biggest kicker here as well is the healing speed by 20%. So if you're running low on like speed ups or you're trying to do the help, you're trying to maximize help. So increasing 20% is insane. You can do your batch healing and you know you can add all these up in here with the other buff as well right for example you know when the kings activate the healing buff then you can definitely heal a lot faster with this as well so you can heal a lot more in doing the batch healing right so there's a kicker in here this this fronts the thing that i want to say that is actually great as well is that korea we've kind of mentioned this earlier a lot of players especially free to play they would try to switch to korea so that they can reduce that you know that long queue of research to get into T5, research speed by 3%. So that's the main purpose of Korea really in this game. If there's other um, honorable mention that we should say, let me know in the comment section below. But if not, let's move on to the worst one that you can choose. First worst one that I would say is Spain. We've kind of talked about this previously in the last video, but Spain doesn't really give you a lot of benefit. Um, increase cav defense by 5%, gain experience. I mean, it's not really transitional to PvP. So this is one of those worst ones that I would say, in my opinion, in the game that you can choose as a civilization. So if you know somebody who is in Spain, tell them to switch, right? Go for Germany instead. You'll get much better result out of it. Um, I would say the next one would be, um, I would say Japan is one of the worst one. This is why we recommend this for farmers, not your main accounts, right? Increased troop attack by 3%. It helps every single troop type, but your scout marching speed by 30% is practically useless. Resource gathering speed by 5%. It's useless on the main account, I would say. It's great for um, farm account, but for main account, nah, okay? So the next thing I would say is Byzantium. Um, Byzantium... Another thing, increase your health by 5%, stone gathering 10%, hospital capacity 15%. You know, if you're going to choose something like this, yeah, you're probably going to say, oh, I want my hospital capacity by increased by 15%. But honestly, if you can just manage your hospital, just watch it, but do bad shielding and control yourself, you don't really need the 15%. You just go for France instead. I know it's a different unit type, but honestly, it's not really that great for Byzantium. Um, there's like other civilization that you can definitely do. Like if you're really calves, go for Germany. You get more benefit on it long run. You're not going to be in PVP every single day. Just got to remind that majority of the time you're grinding. So keep that in mind when you're choosing the civilization here in Rise of Kingdoms. So I think we've given you an amazing tips here today. Six best, three worst, and we have updated our top pick best civilization in Rise of Kingdoms. With that being said, Rockers, if you guys liked the video, consider subscribing and turn your notification on. And of course, as you head out, press like onto the video. I'll see you guys again next time.